Uh, my mom listened to the podcast accidentally. Did I tell you about this? No. no. Um, so my mom was like, oh, I listened to your iPod. I was like, I have my iPod at my house. What are you talking about? She was like, no, you're, um, you're, um, I was like, oh, the podcast. Your showcast. I was like, oh, the podcast. <laughs> And she was, and I was like, oh, really? You know, she's like, well, I listened to like the first 10 minutes and then you guys started talking about video games. I didn't really, you know, I didn't know what you were talking about. So I went to the end and then I listened to that for a little bit. And I was like, well, okay, well, what did you think, mom? He was like, she was like, well, I think that your friend who runs the podcast could say the F word less. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Game Brew Podcast, episode 012 on September 4th, 2017. This is a special late night edition and I am your host, Ian Richard, and I'm here this week with Chris Wrights. Hi. Alex Reiter. Hello. Dan Rotz. And Will Shell. What's up? His voice so low. (laughs) Uh, so welcome, welcome everybody to the game brew. Um, and I just want to real quick uh, say congrats to our giveaway winners, Jeremy West and Stephen Robbins from last week, who both won some awesome free games. So if you want to win some free games, listen to the rest of the podcast, and we'll tell you how to go about doing that this week. Uh, today we will be talking about what we've been up to this past week in terms of gaming, and we'll choose each other's gaming spirit characters, and we'll talk about balancing life in your gaming hobby. But first. It's time for a fucking beer. Okay. My mom's going to hate that, Mm. that you said that. (laughs) Chris, what are we drinking this week? We're drinking a fucking beer. Uh, (laughs) This is Old Rasputin. It's uh, it's an imperial stout, a Russian imperial stout. Da. It's from North Coast. Uh, Yes. In Soviet Russia, beer drink you. Da. North Coast Brewing (laughs) Company in California, which is not in Russia. By the way, <laughs> it's not that far north. Fun fact: California is not in Russia, but it's close to Alaska, and you can see. You can it see from it's, there. it's it's in Alaska's backyard. Yeah, and yeah. there are socialists in both places. True, also true. It's ninety five, or it's ninety five percent. No, it's nine percent alcohol, <laughs> and it's a pretty bitter beer. Uh, Seventy five IBUs. Well, IBUs are a measurement of bitterness. Am I, Chris? Am I incorrect, or does this have a a one hundred point? rating on beer advocate i think it did it used to if i recall correct correctly i don't know if it still does i think this might be my favorite beer that we've ever consumed on this podcast i really this is an excellent like beer. i really like this beer it's got like a nice super foamy head um opaque black color and it's um it's got like a real nice smokiness on the back end that is just super appealing And there's nothing I like more than some smokiness on my back end. Right. So it's an alcoholic (laughs) beer. So last week, what the fuck were we drinking? Golden Monkey, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was a lighter beer, so there wasn't a whole lot of uh, heavy flavors to counterbalance the alcohol taste of that beer. So I feel like this one has a lot of, um, a lot, like a couple of heavier flavors that help to play against like the super harshness of the alcohol, which balances it right out. Yeah. It's also pretty hefty, though. Like, so there's a lot of people. Actually. It, it's very yeah. It's a very it stout, a stout, stout, <laughs> a stout squared. Uh, wink, wink, wink. So I mean, I know that I know a lot of people who don't like stouts because they are like much heavier. So yeah. for us, I feel like us as a beer drinking collective enjoy stout beers very much. So we're not afraid of bitter. We are not. No, and we're yeah. not afraid of thick, and we're not afraid of dark. So just keep that in mind for our date, dating profiles. Oh, that's- <laughs> and, uh, it, so it's it it does have a ninety five on Beer Advocate. That's pretty so high. That's real good. I'm not joking about this. This ba- this beer pairs quite well with Oreos, specifically vanilla Oreos. I'm that's not all kidding. those chocolate notes. It's good. there. Mm. There are some like chocolatey oh, yes. notes yeah. in here, and coffee. And I just happen to be eating some Oreos, getting my. Get my fat ass on this afternoon, <laughs> dealing with some stress, and happened to crack open one of these earlier, and it oh, it just it just the flavors dance on your taste buds like fairies, and it's it's delicious. <laughs> Speaking Chocolate-y of uh, vanilla of fairies, dancing on things. Will, do you want to tell us about dancing on your new rig that you picked oh, up this week? Oh, you mean my editing rig? Dude, I do. You shouldn't dance on editing that. That's ring. not if good. You, for yeah, you. that's gonna break it. That's gonna break for it real our fast. <laughs> Facebook and Twitter followers, they should already know what I'm talking about here. Oh, dude! I so I picked up an ASUS uh, 
GL502. Asus? Asus. 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 Is it uh or ooh? Is it, it's not, it's not, it's not Asus. If you turn it upside down, it's Zusa. I say Asus, <laughs> and I Zusa? think that's correct. Zusa. Susa? Susa? Susa. Susa. We played the tuba. <laughs> All right, sorry. But no, I love the thing. I have been playing so many games on this damn thing, specifically Shadow of Mortar. That's what I've been into the past week, kind of getting ready for uh, what's next one? Shadow of War. Getting yeah. ready for Shadow yeah. of War. And uh, But oh my God, this thing. First of all, it cuts the podcast down from like a 20 to 30 minute cut time to MP3 down to four minutes. So it's bitching, and it runs. It's got a full size 1060 in it, and the it 1060, runs. What's the processor? Uh, the processor is the 7700 HQ. So that's a, I believe that's it's a cut HQ. down. That's a cut it's down 7700. Yeah, yeah, it's an i7. It's not a full sized i7 like you'd find in the desktop. Yeah, you wouldn't want to put so, that in a yeah, laptop; what, it would explode. What they've been doing with a lot of gaming laptops recently is, is with the 10 series. It's that they've been putting full size GPUs into yeah. gaming laptops, which is ridiculous. So it, it really brings up the, the power of uh, of laptops compared to desktops, and you're really starting to see. Oh, yeah. it's and, wonderful. And the heat output. So if you ever you know, don't have the money for a small furnace, you can It'll melt your testicles off. The heat on this is not that bad. It is really? not that bad. No, no, no. So long as you don't have the vents covered up. There's a vent on the bottom. Uh, for intake and on the sides for intake and all the outtakes on the back. Uh, it's oh, really not that bad. It never gets, even under an hour or two of gaming, it never gets so hot that you can't touch the thing. Uh, and the temps never really get anywhere out of any normal zone that you wouldn't find an air-cooled GPU on in a desktop anyways. Uh, it, yeah. It's really quite impressive. They've done a damn good job with it. Uh, there's a dual fan design in this, I believe, so that's kind of why it sucks so much air and keeps everything so cool. They kind of planned ahead for that full-size 1060. It's awesome. I love it. I want it to have my children. Oh, wow. Um, hmm. Yeah. Speaking of having your children, Dan, what have you been up to this week? I don't know why you <laughs> why brought that Why does that, that have anything to do with <laughs> <laughs> That has nothing to do with uh, what I've been playing. <laughs> I've been playing Bioshock, uh, the remastered version. Of the original one. I picked up all three, Bioshock, Bioshock 2, and Bioshock Infinite. Mm. Um, I've played all of them before, but I saw them and they were inexpensive and it's been a while, so I decided I wanted to play it again. Did you not already have Bioshock 1 and 2 on uh, on PC? No, I had them on my Xbox and, and my Xbox One. I forgot how incredibly good the soundtrack for Bioshock Infinite is. Mm-hmm. Yo, it's that that has freaking... to be one of the best soundtracks in gaming, and we didn't even talk about it when we were talking about gaming music. And I feel yeah, bad. Now. A future reference: we should talk about soundtracks in gaming. Put that on yeah. the list. That's one of my favorite things because all the music and just the ambiance in that game is what initially made me love it so much was because it was just terrifying not because of the story because the story is kind of messed up but that whole like perfect human person being like atlas shrugged type stuff but more so that the environment is so much of a part of the playing dynamic if that makes any yeah. sense no they, they totally nail the environments and like that That's yeah true. and it was great but i mean but also i'm seeing a bunch of things where I'm like, oh, it's cool how they kind of improved on this gaming mechanic over time with the plasmids and the guns. Like in the in the original Bioshock, you had to either shoot or use plasmids. You couldn't do both at the same time. So you had to like pick like, oh, am I going to do this and then this? Or am I going to do this and then this? As far as like shoot somebody with electricity and then shoot them with a the gun or just shoot them a whole bunch with the gun. Or light some people on fire with burning plasmid. So that adds a little bit to it. It's definitely like original shooter kind of 2008, you know? It's weird. It's like it's a shooter from 2008. (laughs) (laughs) But it's when it was, yeah, when it was more about like the game and stuff instead of here's all these crazy wall jumps and you have a jetpack and you can go to the future and stuff. Well, yeah, it was like at the same time as Half-Life. Yeah, I like yeah, exactly. confirmed. No, no, that no was they actually unconfirmed three. that. That was Half Life Two, Episode Three. <laughs> yeah, you heard God it here on the Game Brew Podcast. More misinformation <laughs> for you, uh, Chris. What have you been up to, buddy? I've been doing like a lot of like some of a lot of different things. 
um, since I've Chris been traveling. Been soul searching. A grab bag. A grab a bag. A bag of gaming. Board, if you will. Yeah, he's, uh, a buffet. Yeah. A cornucopia. Uh, mm. Yeah, a cornucopia. Like Golden is... Corral. So, mm. No, if it, if it was like Golden Corral, I would have played a lot more. And pooped and a lot more, too. And run to the too. bathroom several times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so I've been playing Dying... I've I played Dying Light some this week, which I haven't played for a while. It's really good. I, forget, I always forget how good it is. And it's so much fun to play with other people. Yeah. Um, Dying like Light is the free-running sort of thing, like Mirror's Edge-ish with zombies. Yeah. It's a good and, descriptor, uh, you yes. Th- you get to beat them with rebar or pipes and you can <laughs> or electrocuted or, yeah, razor electrocute blades. Them. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's like it's like more serious than Dead Rising, but less serious than I don't know, a serious zombie game. <laughs> uh, uh, what was that one for PlayStation? That was really good. Dying Light's a little more serious than like uh Dead Rising, but a little less serious than uh, the Last of Us, maybe. God, what a good game! What a good game! Yeah, and then I've also been playing. I I was at home and have my shitty laptop. I don't have a cool laptop like some mm. people, so I had to break it out my I had to break out my shitty laptop and play some Morrowind because that's about all I can handle. Dude, that's awesome, though. Dude, I love that. That was like my first Elder Scrolls experience was Morrowind, and Dude, I didn't really awesome, get it Morrowind. when I was little because awesome. I played it on Xbox, and I was like, ah, I don't really. I I want to like it, but I can't get into it. And now I really appreciate it. Dude, I can't believe that Morrowind was your first Elder Scrolls. I was playing Daggerfall on PC way back in Daggerfall. Well, I didn't wow. have a PC. I didn't really have a PC back then that could handle any major games. So I played it first on Xbox. Gotcha. Gotcha. Alex, what have you been doing, man? Um, so I've been a little busy. I did get to play a little bit of Portal 2, a little bit of Rocket League with Dan this week. Yeah. Uh, I got my ass kicked in the dunk contest in... uh, Oh, it's so good. No, you got your ass kicked. You've been working up to that for so long. I know. It's it's really... It's difficult. It's hard. Um, And you have to choose... You have a drop-down list of a whole bunch of crazy dunks that you can do, and then you have to time hitting it at the right time, and then you get judged on on how well you do. And I missed two of my dunks because I tried crazy dunks and... Wait, is, oh, NBA yeah. 2K17 sounds like the Dark Souls of basketball games. <laughs> <laughs> but it, Ian, we're not allowed to talk about Dark Souls anymore. Right, because no. we no, talked about Dark Souls. Not so, talking about Dark Souls. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention is uh, uh, I'm, I'm about to change jobs. And Woo! while I am at my current job, we have an Oculus at work. And nice. I, I like to, uh, at the very end of the day sometimes... Um, is play Robo Recall. Yeah, which is a oh, I've game. Heard it's really cool. I don't know what this game. is. What is this? This game is incredible. It's a it's like a '90s arcade shooter style, and the music is is straight up '90s. I mean, it's basically the VR version of Time Crisis, but yes. instead of Fuck shooting yeah. like bad guys, you're shooting these crazy rogue robots that are trying to kill you um and not only can you shoot them you can also grab them by these handles that are on their body and shake them around like (laughs) ragdolls and rip their heads off and beat them with their arms and uh just pull apart their bodies and there there's a couple different modes so one of the modes is you have to recall the robots and so you actually have to grab the robots and throw them into this vortex that takes them to your ship that they oh, get cool. recalled yeah. it sounds Ooh, fun. fun i've heard it's like one of the really good ones for vr right now it is and the sound is incredible i really like it a lot the spatializing of of everything is is done perfectly it's really really it, it's a fun game sweet cool um so this past week i was i was traveling a lot again well that's actually that's a lie so you lied the to past- like so many people right there hey there's cake at the end of the first segment everybody by the way if you stick around <laughs> <laughs> um so lauren was in italy for like a week and a half a week and a couple of days so i played a, like a fuck ton of video games Yes, you um, apologies to Dan's mom for dropping the F-bomb. Yeah, Sorry, come Dan's on. Mom. She's real mad at you um, right now, bro. Uh, so I played I played a whole lot of mobile stuff because I was on the road for part of that. So a lot of Hearthstone and a lot of Mr. Shifty, which is a Switch title, which I recommend you don't pick up. Um, <laughs> but then why'd you play a lot I, of it? 
Well, because I'm going to write a full review of it for the gamer page, but uh, too long, don't read. It's probably not worth your money right now. So and why will, are you going to write something about uh, it? TRD, I, I TLDR for TLDR, those of you who don't TRDL. speak normal. Yeah. Um, so Hearthstone I played a lot of and a lot of Warframe, which if are it's a free-to-play third-person shmup game where it's like PvE and you can team up with other people and do missions. It's so much better than it was several years ago. So many updates have gotten it a long way from where it was. And I I had a ton of fun with it. I probably put like 14, 15 hours in the past in like five or six days, which is a little bit embarrassing to admit, but it was super fun. Um, so if you're into like third person shooters, I would definitely check out Warframe because it's free. It's free. Dan, did you want to say something? You wanted to yeah, if you're game? not into that stuff, don't play it. I think it's boring. <laughs> it's wow. science fictiony, right? It's science fictiony. Uh, it's not like the lore does not matter at all. It's really like you're Aww. a guy with guns and magic. Go blow people up. Basically, it's your you're a robot space ninja. Go be a yeah. robot space ninja. Yeah, yeah, with, that's with exactly. With like Diablo slash Borderlands type loot yeah, system. Yeah, it's, it's got it's more of like a. It's a free to play model, so you collect blueprints and then you collect. Uh, di- lots of different uh, sets of what do we call this? Uh, uh, money, money, currency. Lots of different currencies to build your items, and then and then you have to wait for them to build. So it's not like Diablo where new loot is dropping all the time, but you're always getting currencies to get you to the next thing. And I didn't find the free. To- I didn't spend any money on it, and I didn't find the free to play model at all. Turned it off for me. It was really fun. So sweet. I thought it was cool. I also just picked up um, Mario plus Rabbids uh, Kingdom Battle, which mm-hmm, is yes. super fun for the Switch and uh, Absolver. So I'll give you some more. Oh my God, Absolver! Too. Have you heard about Absolver? Absolver. Oh my God! Oh, oh my gosh! gosh. Oh my Absolver God. is out, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> You've been talking so about that game myself. forever. <laughs> I've been talking about Absolver for like a year and a half. I'm so excited that it's out. I have I played like five minutes of it, so. I don't what have the fuck to are you yet. doing here, dude? Go and play you Absolver hard the entire time. Can I can I bring it can I bring it back a little bit? Can I bring it back yeah. a little bit? Because yeah, I think yeah. you talked about Absolver on the first podcast that no one has heard. Hopefully, really on the Shadow podcast that I'm was never truly recorded just to on that. episode zero, the non-existent episode zero zero one. I'm pretty sure it's there. I don't remember. I need to <laughs> I need to listen to I'm, that. Again. I'll go listen to it later and, and confirm that. Yeah, well, we'll um, we'll never release that episode. So sorry, audience. So sorry, everyone. This, you can't tell. You will never know. Absolver may or may not have been discussed. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the first segment. So we thought it would be a really fun game to play to choose each other's spirit video game characters. There's a strong tradition of choosing each other's spirit animals, right? So yeah. like, I was always a I don't even know what I was. I feel a like lemur I was like a dolphin or a, or a meerkat. Lemur. So anyway, um, but since this is the game brew and not the animal brew, we're going to choose each other's video game spirit characters. So we'll go around a circle um, and we'll talk about who's what and why they're that. And then we'll disagree on things and it'll be fun. Um, and I want to start with Will. Thanks for telling Will... us that it will be fun. <laughs> yeah. you, you fun feel will enjoy. be had. It's you it's will have we're drinking fun. Russian beer. Everybody will have the fun. It's mandatory. <laughs> you will have it. You will have it. Everybody has the, second, the is fun. Is this two in a row that you've had that? Two, two yes, this time. is two episodes in a row. That's the mandatory, mandatory fun. Mandatory fun. Yeah. Commissioner. I am the commissioner <laughs> of mandatory fun. Everybody has to have it. <laughs> okay, Will. You had Chris. You were choosing the mandatory character for um, the mandatory, the spirit video <laughs> game character fun. for Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you choose? Yes, and why? I had Chris. So I did a lot of research on this because Chris is such an interesting human being. Like he's he's Thanks. goofy as hell, but That's he's good, so right? intelligent and he's he's really just chill and well rounded, and he's a beefy dude and. He's a rocker. He likes concerts and music. And so I settled on after looking at and researching like a shit ton of characters, some of which I forgot about. Chris's spirit video game character is Bowser. Ooh. And, yeah. And it's Bowser. Because, first of all, just look at Bowser. Slap a beard on Bowser. <laughs> Chris. Done. Chris, I've never seen your tail before. That's a little weird. <laughs> you true. should see me breathe fire. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, 
both Bowser and Chris are just burly, stout dudes. Uh, Bowser probably loves to drink, and I know Chris really loves to drink. <laughs> in, in Will's mind. Yeah, in Will's mind. And then Bowser is obviously a hardcore rocker, and Chris loves going to <laughs> rock concerts. And if it's you don't true. understand why, just look at a picture of Bowser. All right, he's got the studded, he's got studded <laughs> pretty, leather bracelets he's metal. on his he wrist. Is pretty metal. And for some reason, what what do you call studded leather bracelets that you wear on your biceps? Because Bowser I has those armbands. I yeah. studded leather Dude, armbands. Let's Bowser like more those. Bowser would feel right at home at a Guar concert. Yes, Dude, he would. He, he would. He did Guar concerts. Guar. Bowser and Chris would throw the hell down at a Guar concert. <laughs> have any of you guys been to a Guar concert? Uh, no, I have no. not. But I've been to the Guar bar in Richmond. Oh man, we gotta we gotta go to a Guar concert. You guys, you know are they out. you know they have the Guar bar in Richmond, right? Yeah, Guar yeah. Bar. the Guar bar. The Guar bar. Oh, are you guys talking about the Guar bar? Yeah, the Guar bar. Did you have a large spar at the Guar bar? <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, awesome. Will, thank you for choosing Bowser for Chris. I appreciate Chris. that. I'm okay with that. All right, so Chris, you had Dan, and what did you choose for Dan Spirit? So the game character? I had a tough time, not because it was hard to think of something for Dan, but it was hard to narrow down what I wanted it to be. So I went through a couple Ooh. of things, and I think there's kind of a common theme around all of them. So the first one that I thought of was the the narrator from Stanley Parable. Oh, I love that guy. I know. He's so great, <laughs> especially because he says, you left your office and you turned right. Okay, you turned left. Uh, not what I told you to do, but that's okay. I'm just a, a disembodied voice anyway. Dan, you are very matter of fact. So, so I, was thinking of, I was thinking of that, and then I was thinking... Well, it'd be kind of shitty if I did this, but Claptrap, just because he's he's very funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's funny and like wants, is kind of wants to murder you a little bit, too. Yeah. Because yep, yep, that's how yep. I feel about you guys most Going of the time. Going with the murder true. theme is HK47 <laughs> from KOTOR. Oh my god! Kind of a Which, very sarcastic. I robot. think it's getting even closer. To are you? Honest. Are you basically yeah. saying I'm a robot? Are you telling people that I am an but android finally, type? finally, and Alex actually helped me out with this, <laughs> um, and I think it fits more because you're not a murder robot, um, like like t- three out of four of these are. Yeah. <laughs> or or claptrap. Or if I'm the C3PO, Parable. I'm gonna I'm gonna slap you yeah, in the face. He's no. not a gaming character. No. <laughs> uh, and Al- Alex gave actually thought of this, uh, but Wheatley from Portal Two. If you li- if you go and oh listen, my God. if you go and listen to some of his lines, you can literally hear Dan saying them. His lines, yeah, it's it's it, ridiculous. So, yeah, for those of you yeah. who don't remember, Wheatley is the the little blue eyed, um, uh, little portal robot from Portal Two that helps you out of your room in the beginning and sort of like gets you around. He's the nice one. Yeah, but he's also super sarcastic. Yeah, he's like, oh, and, oh, okay, okay. You don't have to, don't look down. But, but, oh, oh you look down. Oh, okay. Oh, you well, look down. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's really scary. Just, t- just turn around. Just turn around. I'll get you there. It's fine. No. Oh, oh, oh you jumped. Okay. Oh, um. <laughs> okay. Thank God. Can you, can you talk? Can you? You can't talk. That's okay. It's the brain damage. You're fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but like, you, can, I can literally hear Dan saying those lines. It's that's great. funny. Yeah. That's funny. That's I love true. that character. Like, he's yeah. one of my favorite like video game antagonists. I'd have to say. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> but basically I think you're a, a, a murder robot, I guess. I'm a murder robot, a basically. A sarcastic murder <laughs> robot. Sarcastic that's murder gonna, robot. When we make t-shirts, that'll be on the t-shirt. Dan, murder robot rots. Sarcastic murder robot. <laughs> sarcastic murder robot rots. <laughs> <laughs> Splendidly done. Splendidly done, Chris. Well done. So, Dan, you had Alex. I did have Alex. And who is Alex's spirit video so, game character? So, Alex tell us spe- about Alex. Yeah, yeah Alex, okay. well, Al- Alex... Is video game character. I was looking at this a lot as Alex, um, just in general as his personality, but also as his personality as someone who plays video games, because we've been trying to expand. He's been trying to expand his interests in video games and stuff like that. And I kept thinking about whenever I was used to playing Fable and the hero of Bowerstone. He doesn't really have a name. I'm going to call him Chicken Chaser because that's <laughs> usually ah, that's the his name first you title. Got. That's his first title. Um, and that's what I kept thinking about with Alex because he has all this potential as to where he can go, oh. and it's all in his. But and it's all in his like court as far as what it is. But 
also because he's so silly. Like you had the propensity in that game to be super silly. Just fable in general is very uh, silly. Yeah, is a very silly game, and I and Alex is super silly, but also whenever it's serious, he gets to be serious. So that's one of the things I always equate to that hero is that uh, the hero of Bower Stone in Fable One. We're not talking about the other fables; those fables were terrible. Um, but <laughs> they weren't terrible. Uh, Fable uh, two was okay. Fable, Fable two was three okay. Was Fable three was meh. I still played it. Uh, I still liked true. it. Hey, do you guys want to be really surprised? No. I've never played Fable. I've never played Fable either. Uh, yeah, I'm not the only one. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm less surprised I about apparently Alex. need to play myself. <laughs> Congratulations. You played yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but also the reason I chose the Hero of Bowerstone for Alex is because if he eats a lot of apples, he can get really fat too, so... <laughs> so there's that and there's you can that. drink a hundred beers in that game there's that too but I eat a lot of food and I don't get fat must be nice mm-hmm. must be nice mm-hmm. <laughs> very good Dan I think I think that was a, a spectacular choice Dan, that was, well done. Yeah. Alex I want to hear so Alex had me so I'm like I'm, I'm kind of stoked for this I'm ready to know who I am deep down who I, are you all right, who so, am I <laughs> Great Jackie Chan movie. Yeah. Two, four, six, Thank you, Dan. So I, I'm sorry, Ian. I had a lot of of trouble with this, and yeah. the main reason I had a lot of trouble with this is, yeah, m- most of the games that I've played, the main characters, if you yeah. really look at their persona, are assholes. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 so it was really difficult for me to find someone that wasn't an asshole or someone that wasn't just this wild crazy character. Ian, I find you to be very uh stoic and and stoic. E- and you are I mean you are our fearless leader of the podcast but I mean even in college <laughs> being being the section leader and the the drum major and marching band so <laughs> two of the people that that caught my eye were Fox McCloud <laughs> nice yes. he is a leader uh-huh that's about as far as I got with Fox. Um, <laughs> also, he's good looking, just like Ian. He is good looking. Wait, before you go on, Ian, we're going to need to do a barrel roll. <laughs> do a barrel roll. Double tap, do Z. Roll. Double tap Z. I also found that in a lot of video games I was researching, the main characters were assholes, but the the sidekicks were the nice people. The sidekicks were the the people that you could always depend on. The, they were the ones that always had your back. And so one character that does this is Otakon, <gasps> Dr. Hal Emmerich from Metal Gear Solid. I thought Whoa. I was going to be Otakon. <laughs> nice. <laughs> My bad. Dude, good pull. It's all right. I'm murder robots. <laughs> He is a, a a solid sidekick in terms of, of video games. He uh there's a lot of shit that goes on in, in Hal's life, but he always has snakes back no matter what. Nice. I like that. I like that. So that those were my like serious ones. And then the funny one is Mario, because I <laughs> like your happy silly side is just like the Mario laugh. I do want to point out that Ian doesn't have a mustache. Anyone who's yeah. wondering, and he's not Italian. Nor do I have hair. So Italian plumber tough. mustache. Not a plumber. Yeah, not a plumber. But that's okay. Thanks, Alex. Good work. So I had Will for my uh, spirit video game character, and yeah, you did. I've known Will for a long time. I've known Will since college, but um, like an unfortunate amount of time. What? A, you could say an unfortunate amount of time, <laughs> depending um, on how you feel about and, that. And even before that, I I've heard stories of Will's past. So Will is a kind of person who follows his curiosity. By which I mean he sort of goes through these, these like different. I don't want to say like phase has a negative connotation, but it's not really phase. He just like picks up different things along the way. So like there was a phase where he was super into CB radios, and there was a phase where he was super into being emo, and there was a 
phase where he was super <laughs> into like karate in his life. And and some people some people might look at a person like that and say like, well, this person is just inconstant. This person just doesn't understand how to like be the same human being to just evolve in one direction the whole time. And I would say back to them, fuck you, you're an asshole. Will is outstanding. <laughs> but he's outstanding because he's still the same person, even though he might wear a different set of of uh you know like spiritual clothes at any one time and the character that i could think of who does this the best is mario actually so it's funny that you yeah! mentioned him because because mario is always mario whether he's mario in super mario brothers or he's mario in super mario brothers 2 completely different game or he's mario in super mario brothers rpg or he has a bunch of different suits that he wears so it's like mario throwing fucking fireballs or mario in star suit doing awesome stuff or mario in the frog suit he's still mario he's just mario in a different suit and um, it's Mario Mario and the other thing about Mario is that he's always looking out for his brother and I will be Will's Luigi until the end of time oh. so oh. Will oh. Will is Mario I'm alright with that <laughs> I'm alright with that That's strong. does that mean I'm always going to antagonize the two of you yeah, I guess you still steal wheels. I'm girlfriend steal and wheels, girlfriend. Steal, all the time. Steal, steal wheels. No, steal wheels. Steal, steal wheels. wheels. That's pretty adorable. If and you've you've illustrated to all of our listeners that you have a very close bromance, which is yes, which is do. nice to me. I like that you put that out into the world. Yeah, you know, you've let your love shine <laughs> and just you know let it go, guys. Let your love shine. Real quick before we uh, we go on break, do you guys want to talk about what you thought your your own spirit animal was going to be? Or yeah, I mean, computer guy, glasses, dark hair. I was like, yeah, someone's going to say I'm Otacon. I mean, that's basically what happens. I didn't even think about mine. I was thinking I could either be Rayman, 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 no, or or Ray like Ray Romano, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or, or the Rain Man. Or uh, Crash is my internal spirit animal. Crash he's the closest. Yeah. He's the closest thing to a um, uh, to a prairie dog that's in video games. <laughs> yeah, it. but you're way Got smarter than him. <laughs> Until we come out with Prairie Dog Simulator 2018, Ooh. look for it, guys. It's that's coming. That's gonna be a hot, hot prairie hot dog release. Simu- Wait, Prairie Dog Simulator? That sounds. <laughs> I have questions about what type of <laughs> game this. <laughs> Does this count this with circles, this circles back to the poop conversation in the pregame? Yeah. Every time. God, every every time. time. Oh, we Always. should release What's a pregame podcast just of all the stuff we talk about <laughs> before we actually record the podcast. <laughs> all right. Well, that is it for segment one. What spirit video game characters do you think we are? Let us know. What? What? Why are you making that think? What, what are you doing? No, no, I'm good. I didn't want to say what I thought I was going to be. Fine. It's fine. Oh, it's no, fine. no. I it's thought fine. everybody no, it's was fine. done. It's fine. What what did you think you were going to be, Chris? I thought I was going to be Eddie Riggs. I, that's what I thought. That was the first For thing brutal that legend. Eddie yeah. Riggs. Yeah, Eddie Riggs would have been good. Eddie Riggs would have been good. I, I, was, I even dressed up as him for Halloween one year. I was that did cool. You, really? really? I remember yeah, seeing pictures like, of that. Oh, yeah, shit. in college. You know what I just remembered? Will and I dressed up as Marlin, Mario and Luigi one time for Halloween. Too. Damn right we did. Oh, my God. Yeah. I was Ash Ketchum one Halloween. You, whoa. whoa. Dude, Alex, did you dress up like a video game character one Halloween? Okay, Anyways, that's podcast. our show okay, today. Okay, you're <laughs> off the podcast. Get him out of there. All right. On to the next segment. Here we go. All right, folks, that's it for segment one. What spirit video game characters do you think you are? Let us know by sending us an email at thegamebrew at gmail.com or hitting us up at thegamebrew on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you do, we'll send you along a free game code. That's right, friends. A free game code just for sending us an email. It's crazy. Right now, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll check in with the beer, discuss how to balance life and gaming, and we'll check in with your email. Emails, stick with us. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Game Brew Podcast, episode 12. Let's check in with the beer. It's Old Rasputin. It's a Russian Imperial Stout. How? I mean, I love this beer. What are you guys thinking about it? My desk really likes it, and so do I. 
<laughs> <laughs> it's like it's not my favorite. Like I'm not a huge stout fan. Like it's not my my any of my go to. I'm never craving a stout. Oh, Chris. Oh, What's, Chris. Remind me what the difference between a stout and a porter again is. So a stout is a darker porter, like a stronger porter, more alcohol. Yeah, a more stout porter. Yeah, it's a. They used to be advertised as stout porters. Oh, interesting. I'm impressed that I like this as much as I do because I tend to not like really super bitter things. I'm more of a weenie beer drinker and I like sweet, flavorful things. But this is really nice. I got to say, I'm I'm digging it. It's got some chocolate in this, chocolatiness to it. <laughs> yeah, man. It's also strong. That, that apparently. are the Oreos. I, I don't know. Uh, it might yeah, be one the of the two things. But Could the, be the so Imperial, Russian Imperial stouts are slightly different than normal stouts because they have more hops in them. They used to send these off to Catherine II of Russia's court. And so to make that trip, uh, they had a lot of hops as a preservative, similar to how uh, IPAs had a lot of hops to make it to India. Hmm. Interesting. So these were exports from from Europe to... Well, from from England. From England. Okay, cool. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, I I like it. Like I said, I think this might be my favorite beer that we've had on the podcast yet, so... Mm. I would recommend everybody go check it out. Faux show. And he's making a cool hand sign. And and it says never say die, just like the Goonies on it. Right. So it's got a lot going for it. Never say die. Also, Rasputin, his his penis is in a jar in Russia somewhere. Supposedly. Allegedly. Supposedly. Because Dan, as you know, is an expert on ancient penises. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an expert penisologist. If you stay tuned for future podcasts, whenever I talk more about penises of the history of the world. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sure you'll have a large cult following. It's a, it's canon now. It's happening. You you have no choice. Nick, yeah, It sounds like a hard podcast to make. <laughs> 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 I get it. It's a penis joke. Uh, oh man, it's a penis okay. joke. Sorry, enough with the puns. So, our second topic this week is balancing life and gaming. Whether you're the kind of person who lives a crazy full life and doesn't feel like they have time to get enough gaming in, or you're the kind of person who games and games and games and thinks, "Oh my god, what have I done this weekend? I haven't gotten anything done." We all struggle with balancing our life with our hobby and our hobby is gaming and so we wanted to talk about how we wrestle with this because none of us is perfect we all none of us is perfect fall on one side of the equation (laughs) or the other and so we want to talk about maybe some things that we do to make sure that we're not gaming too much or some things to that we do to make sure that we are actually taking some times for ourselves and making sure that we are getting to our games. So um, I wanted to uh, go straight to Chris actually on this because Chris has some really developed thoughts and, and he's someone who's, who's had his fair share of struggles with gaming. I mean, there was a time Chris in college where you were probably unhealthily gaming. Yeah. Um, that's probably true. And (laughs) (laughs) um, one of the, one of the big things I kind of realized is that if I'm saying, I'm going to say I'm going to do something, I'm going to say that it's a priority to me and, and prioritize it, whether it be gaming or play, practicing tuba or studying for classes or, or whatever. Now I feel like in college, I probably played too many games and now I I feel like I don't have enough time. Kind of how I handle that is I change my mindset of how I think about it. So a lot of people are like, oh, I don't have time for games. I don't have time for whatever. And I changed that phrase to say gaming isn't a priority right now or exercising is a priority is not a priority right now or studying is not a priority right now. And that kind of makes me think about it differently because if I'm trying to make one of those things a priority, then you'd kind of do. Does that kind of make sense? So you're yeah. you're saying like if a certain thing is a priority in your life, then you need to make time to do that. Whether right. whether or not you feel like you have time or not, you have time. You just have to find the space in your schedule to get it done. Correct. Um. So that was kind of, that was a big revelation for me. I I think I read that in a book somewhere. I totally know what Chris is talking about because that's kind of my that's my mindset now with gaming, and especially since we have this podcast. I love doing this podcast. Um. I have some people around me in my life because i have too many jobs is the 
moral of Dan Ross. If you if you were to look at Dan Ross, you'd say, man, that guy does too many jobs. And you're right. There are too many. <laughs> and some people are like, well, why don't you not do this podcast thing that you want to do? Because I'm like, I enjoy doing this podcast. Like, this is one of the best parts of my week is coming here and talking to my buds about video games while drinking beer. Absolutely. And and uh, th- and it's the same thing with video games where it's like, I want to make the time. And while I have to schedule time to do that, and while sometimes it's like, okay, video games this week are not a priority. They're not high on my list. Like, the things that are high on my list is like, doing laundry which unfortunately for me is one of the things where i have to make a priority on my list every once in a while because i just don't have the time to sit there for a few hours the cool hours thing and about do laundry. doing laundry is that you can do other things you can while play you're doing video laundry. games while you're yeah, doing right. laundry yeah, yeah you that's can how i played some bioshock son what up um but the uh but yeah it's all about and that time management is just hard to do um because you gotta set you have to set limits like say I have to do this thing. Like I have to record this audio that I have to do for another project. So I'm going to do that for this amount of time or until it's done. And then I can do this other stuff or I can do this while it's doing that. And setting those goals, I think is probably the best thing. And that's kind of a, that's kind of life advice too. It's make sure that you have those priority goals set and then you can do the things that you enjoy even if those things that you enjoy are part of those goals, that just makes it a, yeah. this makes it a better part of those yeah. goals. I think that's definitely true. Like you need to be able to prioritize and, and re- like recording a podcast like this does take some time. Not to talk too much about the podcast itself because that's maybe a little bit too meta, but it does take some time <laughs> to like think about the topics and write out the script and make sure that we're editing and make sure we're doing the social media stuff. So we all choose like we didn't have time to do this before we chose to have time to do this. Yeah. You know, we were all busy before we started doing this podcast. We just decided that it was part of what we wanted to do with our time. And so we made time for it. And I think that's the same thing with, with any hobby, gaming included. If you want to do more gaming, set aside, and, you know, set aside 45 minutes yeah, at fuck. some point. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of waking up earlier to get more shit done. To me, waking up earlier in the morning, that's like free time. You yeah. roll out of bed. Go do whatever you want for 45 minutes before you have to do life things. So, I'm, I'm a big proponent of morning time. How much earlier than 5 in the morning can I wake up? Is that is that appropriate? Yeah. Yeah. 4.30, man. 4.30 oh, is totally God. a legitimate <sighs> time to wake up. Okay. I And I feel like it's also finding the appropriate game for the time. You know? Yeah, that's true too. Like, you want to like, find a game that respects your time. Well, like you want to find like like you if you only have thirty minutes to play, you have to get a game that that fulfills you for thirty minutes. Like you don't want to play, you don't want to get into a game that that has a ton of shit to do. Like you don't want to play The Witcher for thirty minutes. That's not fulfilling. Like yeah. right? you'll just run somewhere and that'll be it. And that's where I'm at right now. Where I have The Witcher three started and Dark Souls started. But I, I mean, I don't have more than 10 hours in Dark Souls and I don't have more than like 15 hours in, in Witcher 3 because I just I don't have right now where I am at in my life is I can't sit down for more than 30, 45 minutes to play right. a game. Um, and so like maybe something like Rocket League is perfect for you. Yeah, Rocket exactly. League is perfect because Dan and I the other night played like four rounds of four or five rounds of Rocket League. In it was like, more like eight, but that's okay. It's fine. Yeah, it's all right. You can forget. It's fine. Alex, details. I know I mean nothing to you. It's okay. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Wow. Oh, damn, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Dan's a heartless murder robot anyway. He doesn't really care. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I love eating batteries. I mean food. Food. I like eating human food. <laughs> no, but I, I think I think the comment about making sure that you're picking a game that respects you is really important. Certain games you can dive into for a short period of time and get a great experience, but like Dark Souls games... Nope. I only play them during the summer when I have a long break because you you're not going to get shit done otherwise. What is and, a summer? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, this Must is the nice. thing that teachers do when they're done complaining about the school year. Uh, it's also it's also about finding games that respect your mood, I guess. So like so like you have to find the game that fits your mood, not just like the t- the time period. Like so my girlfriend often feels like she can't 
when she comes home from from work, she can't play video games because she she's so exhausted. Like her mind is so exhausted mm. from work that she doesn't want to have to think about stuff. So it's also finding the game that fits your mood as well. That's a good mm. point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Well, th- I mean, that's and that's kind of like remember that time. I know I wouldn't talk. I told you guys I wouldn't talk about Stardew Valley anymore. But do you remember mm. that time <laughs> whenever I played Stardew Valley for a really long time? Yeah. Yeah. Will loves talking about Stardew Valley. Yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. Will loves Farmville. that game. Farmville. Um, <laughs> it's not. It's way better than Farmville. I, I, I have an informal mini blog about Stardew Valley that I may be picking oh, up. Oh, man. Again, yeah, so. I forgot oh, about dude, that. Yes. Holy oh, my shit. gosh. Post that, please. <laughs> I love that blog. But the thing about Stardew Valley is, and I said it. I think in like episode four or five, that is just kind of mindless. Like I'm farming stuff and that's it. That's all I'm doing. I'm going, I'm farming. I'm doing the same thing. I have a schedule that I adhere to. And that's. Yeah. Sort of is really comforting. For. Yeah. Because yeah. of the yeah. schedule, like you go out, you, you wake up, you water your plants, you buy whatever you need from town, you go visit your people, you go to the inn, you buy supplies, you go back home, you go to sleep, you turn around and do it all again the next Maybe day. Maybe you go it's, to the mine. You yeah. don't know. Maybe right. there it's, won't be it's time. Re- right. It's really... Maybe you go um, with uh, Alexa or whatever her name was. I don't remember what I feel was. like that game is comforting because it's cyclical. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so one of the things that I was thinking about is I was thinking about balancing life and balancing gaming. It's just making sure that you are not for me the you know other people have different problems but for me my problem with gaming is that i find myself actually doing too much gaming and not not enough i think this is partially because i have like a i don't want to say an addictive personality because i've never been addicted to anything but i have a personality where once i start doing something i want to keep doing that thing like i have i very much enjoy repetition is a big thing for me. Um, and, and gaming really plays to that in a way that if I'm not careful can be unhealthy. So the thing that I wanted to say was just to make sure that if you are a person like me, that you are listening, that you are aware of the things that are going on around you. So that might take the form of like making sure that you're listening to the other people who are talking to you. Like my wife, when she says like, Ian, are you coming to bed soon? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to because I'm playing this game, but, <laughs> but 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 if I'm listening and not just hearing what I'm what I'm listening to is I'm I'm hearing her say those words, but what I'm listening to is I'm hearing like you've really been at this for a while. You should probably like stand up and do something else or go outside or do whatever. Um, so listening to that, also listening to your body and making sure like like oh does your back hurt a lot? Maybe you've been sitting down for too much. Like being aware of what's going on in your body. Well, that just well. means you need a better chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or that. yeah. Get a better um, chair. Drink no, but, water. But being drink water, right? So being able to listen to your body and to listen to the people around you who care about you, I think is also really important in terms absolutely. of finding balance. Yeah. Whether absolutely. that has to do with gaming or any other thing. But just just to allow even when you might not like immediately think like yes they're saying the right thing like i'm almost always annoyed when Lauren says that. <laughs> but then like a millisecond later I'm like, hold on self-evaluate how long have you been doing this for and then you realize that they're really just kind of looking yeah. out for you and th- and that's a good that's a good and you just said that that's a really good way to live your life is to make sure that you're really aware of yourself because there are a lot of people who don't go through life being aware of the self like that i'm doing this too much or i'm oh I'm man you're talking about the self and being aware holy shit Whoa. oh my gosh self-awareness this is getting meta. This is getting a real it's deep. a thing it's we've a all thing, been playing right? journey well, this week so yeah, we're just yeah. thinking a little bit bigger than usual <laughs> let's all go read siddhartha <laughs> so yeah, right, i feel well. like i have a really unique perspective on this and uh, so we've got a really good community at the game brew here so i don't mind sharing this with our audience so i am divorced and we're talking about scheduling and paying paying attention to what's going on around you. And I'm not divorced because I liked to play video games. There's a whole other smattering of reasons in that. But one of the things I learned through that process about myself that I need to be better at with other people in my life, whether that's a relationship or my friends, is making time for them. And the way I do that and still have time to play video games and get shit done at work and do all the things that I want to do, go to the gym, is I schedule out almost every second of my day, every single day. 
I wake up. I usually go to the gym in the morning unless there's something else I have to get done that morning. I go to school because I'm a teacher. As soon as I get to school, I take shit. I'm not joking. That's scheduled shit time. <laughs> first thing. Then Me too. Then I go and I teach. I have early morning. So I've got every part of my day planned out like that. And if somebody wants to hang out, if it's the day of, it has to be a big deal type thing for me to, to break my schedule and go do that. You know, if I know ahead of time, it's like, hey, let's hang out Saturday. And I put it in there and I go, even if at the time I don't want to, because it's so important to make time for those extra things in your life. Uh, and I schedule my gaming time as well, because when I go without gaming, I don't feel fulfilled. It's something I really enjoy and I want to do that. So I put that in there as well at the end of every day. Nice. Nice. And yeah, I'm happier for important. it. And gosh darn it, people like me. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I well, feel weird if I don't have time to play a game. For like yeah. like if I if I'm out doing stuff for a weekend, I don't feel like I had a restful weekend. Even if I really didn't do anything that weekend, I don't feel like I had a restful weekend until I get to play some video games. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the part of us that you need that part of you that releases the endorphins like in your brain. You need to release those right. endorphins that feel like you have joy and you have a fun time. Because not everyone has fun the same way, whereas we in the game brew and love playing video games and we love talking to each other and we love playing video games with each other and just, you know, kind of messing around. And that's kind of the thing that we like doing. Some people, it's playing volleyball. Some people, it's uh, sitting by yourself in a room reading a book. It doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you are enjoying what you're doing. At the time that you're doing it, and sure. it is enliv- enlightening you as a person, that's what it's about. It's making yourself feel good about yourself. Yeah, definitely. I feel like there's like a bit there, uh, and I think it's going away some. There definitely was a bit of a stigma as far as like, oh, you're just wasting time playing video games, and it's not. Like it's 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 a it's a hobby. Like for me, it's a hobby. Yeah, it's a great hobby for f- for me. Uh, I played a lot of video games growing up as a kid with my brother and my neighbors. I played a lot of video games in college with my roommates and, and you guys and my other friends. And then after I graduated college, I didn't have that same community, uh, because I was working ridiculous hours and, and it took me a while to realize that when I played video games, it was for that community and that the, the thing that draws me to video games is not, I mean, I I'm, I'm enjoying, I keep, I keep mentioning the Witcher, but I, I enjoy playing that game cause it's a great game, but the things that I really enjoy are when I play games with other people and have those experiences with other people to me that is where video games are important to me. And so I don't make time necessarily to play video games, but I like to make time to hang out with other people and to interact with other people that I, I wouldn't normally in my day to day. And, and even like the game brew crew besides Chris, it's been eight years, almost eight years since I graduated from JMU. And it's like, I, in the past eight years, very little contact between Will, Ian, and Dan. But as soon as we started the game brew, it's like, I'm talking to you guys on a weekly basis now. Yeah. Yeah. Daily basis. And it's awesome. awesome. It's very fulfilling. I think we, I think we better just stop talking about this because I'm tearing up a little bit. Like it's, (laughs) it's getting to me. It's getting to me here. (laughs) it, 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 It is a real thing that, um. You know, I've talked to Lauren about this before, my wife, Lauren, that once you finish with college, once you finish with high school and you move on to your work life, you uh, it's really easy to feel isolated in that because you wake up in the morning, you go to work, you do your work. When you're at work, it's not social time. We're all too busy for social time at work. And then you come home um, and you're exhausted from work, so you don't really have time to, to go out and make friends and stuff. So a lot of times... 
for us at least, this is our space just to be together as human beings. So uh, there's a lot of like friend love going on right now. Oh, it's so beautiful. Up. Welcome Dude, everybody. This, yeah. this conversation is like way deeper than we thought it was going to be. <laughs> but it's probably more the beer than anything. No, but but really, I haven't seen Alex in the flesh in what since you were married, Alex. How long ago was that? Two mm, years. Three years. Yeah, a couple of years. It's been a few years. Yeah. Yeah. Two but years. I still know. Yeah. You know, like. We, it still feels like I know him well and he's a good friend because we get together every other Tuesday night or every Tuesday night if we're talking about planning meetings, you know? That's true. Yeah, I don't think I've seen you guys in since we since college almost. No, no you came well, to we my went wedding. down for Will we went to Will's wedding. Oh, that's right. I remember that. Yep. Yeah, so it wasn't entirely a lost cause. Yeah. I got to hang out with got, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and I got a speeding ticket. I got a speeding ticket oh, on that one too. That's <laughs> I got to meet, we got Our, to meet Dale. That was good. You yeah, did to meet Dale. Dale, Dale was true. pretty cute. Like, oh, he tried to Dale. eat me. Dale. Um, Dale. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, so that's how we balance life in gaming. And that's why we like to make gaming at least something that we do once in a while to make sure we're checking in with our people. Uh, how do you find balance in gaming? What is it that is important in gaming to you? Why do you keep coming back to us? back to it uh let us know <laughs> send us an email at the at gmail.com or hit us up on the social medias at the game brew uh right now we're going to check in with our listener emails oh my gosh we have more listener emails this is very exciting Woo! so exciting yeah. 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 Uh, so today we're going to yeah. feature a couple of comments from sage paris who was talking about uh our fruits in gaming discussion from episode 11 and he says this no matter what language you speak or what country you're from or how you were raised, recognizable fruit is pretty much everywhere. From a design standpoint, it's also probably really useful as a high contrast, easily identifiable sprite to create and use in game. A couple yellow pixels in a curve and half the planet will know it's a banana. Very true. That's well said. Very true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. It's a banana or a really yellow penis. I don't know. One of those two things. Banana <laughs> phone. Ring, 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 I ring. hope it's a banana phone. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, and then another little quote from Sage here. He says, I'm glad I started listening to you guys. It's gotten me excited about games again and using them as a motivational tool. Get my shit done. Put a couple of hours in on a game rather than before where I just avoided them because quote unquote, there's such a waste of time than procrastinating and doing jack all with my time anyway. So it sounds like, uh, it sounds like Sage is using games actually as a tool to help him, um, motivate himself to do other things, which is kind of an interesting concept. I don't know if anybody else has ever I done do that. that. Yeah. No, if I have is. a yeah. big task that I need to get done, you know, I like fold a load of laundry. I'm allowed to do 30 minutes of whatever game I feel like playing next load of laundry. 30 minutes of gaming and I don't have to feel bad because I've been productive and I have clean underwear to put on after I'm done sitting in a sweaty chair for a few hours. And that's mm. how you know you're an adult. That, that's uh, how you know you're an adult. On, yep. Putting on underwear right out of the dryer. Mm. I put on Best I put feeling. on new underwear after every podcast. Oh my God. Wait, what? <laughs> I normally Why don't do you wear do underwear during podcasts. So. <laughs> Join us next week when we have Game Brew Boxers for sale. <laughs> Game oh Brew my boxers. gosh. If we can figure One out, day. if somebody wants to give us money to do that, that would be fine. <laughs> but we have no money. So it's not happening anytime soon. All right, Game Brew listeners, uh, this week we need to say a special fare thee well, not a goodbye, uh, to contributor Alex Ryder because he is transitioning into a new uh, job and he won't be able to join us for a couple weeks. So uh, we just wanted to say thank you for being a part of this podcast. For those of you who don't know, Alex is the brains behind the editing part of our podcast. He taught us. He taught Will and Dan and I how to cut the show, how to mix the show, how to make it sound half decent. Um, so big, huge thank you to Alex for being on the show with us. Thank you. We're going to oh, we're gonna miss, miss you. you. Yeah, yeah, we are going to miss you. Can we get like you, a little doll and just like tape it to the screen? Like a little paper I could, thing? I could probably do that. In there. And write Alex on but it? Alex, just know, so, just know that when you come back, you will have to do the 12 trials of Denethor just to get back into the <laughs> yeah. podcast. Once you leave the game, Brew, you got to earn your shit back in. Yeah, man. So, 
fairly well to Alex and Game Brew listeners that it's it for this episode of The Game Brew. If you have any questions or you want to uh, send us a topic for the show or you just want to say, hey, what's up, Game Brew guys? Send us an email at thegamebrew at gmail.com or uh, send us a message on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Game Brew. And join us next week for a special edition of the show where we'll bring on a special guest. And uh, that's it for tonight. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Night. Bye. But it's not next week. Oh, well, God. You know, two weeks. Or well, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. And stop. Stop. And In the name stop. of love. Oh. See, because the pre-show is where we get the good shit. So good. Get that good, good. Get that good, good. Mm, that, oh, that is the true, true. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's it's going to be hell for me. I can already sense it. <laughs>